<clears throat> okay, we've got a few people online. Can everyone hear me? Okay. Um, must have started. And I want to talk about the database that exists on Android and iOS devices today. Um, so let me put my So looking at document 16, SQLite. Um, so I want to start with my trials and tribulations. I spent most of yesterday doing this issue. Um, so for a long time, whenever I would run Android Studio, the emulator would work for a while, and then if it was idle for a long enough time, it would just Correct. Um, and then this week, um, I'm going to try and run an application or project, and then it would start. And then they both complained they couldn't find ABV. Um, and I said, OK. I rebooted my computer, thinking, well, maybe something wrong with my machine. That didn't help. So, Usually a fresh install will do the trick, right? So I just deleted Android Studio, the emulator, all the settings, reinstalled Android Studio. Um, that didn't work. And I tried it with three different versions of Android Studio. And then I figured, okay, maybe there's something wrong with my machine. This is not working. Um, I, you know, change various settings, um, still complain. And I installed it on a different machine, both are Mac, for different versions of operating system, and no success. Um, well, I can, this isn't true, I can run apps on it, but it's a, I have to install it by hand, install it by hand. So it's sort of slightly painful. Um, so you have to be careful. Um, you probably don't want to upgrade um, Android Studio on the Mac or the emulator anytime soon. Um, you know, we've only had one machine, so well, maybe it's an odd with that machine, but it's happening two machines. It's harder to think that it's just me, could be. Um, it's sort of hard to see how you can install Android Studio incorrectly. Um, but I'll keep you up to date on my trials and tribulations with Android Studio. I don't know how many of you follow HKCD, Congressman Comic online. Um, and this is a nice, <coughs> oh, me. a nice little um, cartoon about tables, right, where you know, the mom gets a phone call from the school. Um, and you know, the problem is that they named the school the son, right? This weird syntax, which um, if executed on a database, um, drop the table students. Um, we just a reminder that 
when you're getting the database and getting the users on the web, you don't want the user to enter you know, a piece of data that's going to be directly in a database without, without looking at that and treating it properly because um, it's a very common technique for people to break into your database. Um, Yeah, so Bigger Ranch covered, talked about SQLite in a later chapter. Um, there's SQLite comes on all Android devices, um, and there are various ways to interact with it. Um, you know, the original Android interface, which we'll talk about today. And after the break, we'll look at um, using Room. Um, it took me it took me longer than I liked yesterday to update my slides using the Android interface. Um, given that I had a hard time running applications, so check it out. Um, Let's see how many people have experience with SQL. Either say yes or send a note on the group chat. Um, okay, one person said experience. Yes. Okay. So it's like three people. Um, whether people either haven't or they are just in okay, so we're okay. So I'll go over this real quickly, right? I mean, this relation, you know, it's basically column tables and each tables columns and columns and different data types, right? Um, it's now. SQLite is a slightly different database. Um, it's meant for to be embedded in the application, whereas something like Oracle, or MySQL, Postgres, um, the separate application usually run on a different machine, right? And then the, your your code will open a connection to the database and send queries. SQLite is meant to be part of your application, right? It's the same code. Um, and since it's going to be embedded in application, particularly on phones, it's it's a lot smaller than say Oracle, um, and it's also much smaller. It, it's also very fast because you're not opening a connection, sending requests to the machine, and getting the response back. It's being executed on your device in your program. Um, there's then we come across the same problem, and that is what happens um, when you're writing code in after the data that's for the database and something goes wrong. It's always nice to be able to look at the actual database. Um, and so there's you may want a it's good, like client to open the database you're looking at, doing it to see what's actually going on. In the past, I've, I've often used the Firefox client. Um, there, are, there are lots of other clients you can use. Um, right, so I've installed in Firefox, um, add ons. And after you install it, there's SQLite Manager, the tools menu. And the nice thing about it, it allows you to, um, you know, look at tables, create tables, add columns um, graphically. Um, so if you've dealt with SQL before, right, this syntax is not too scary. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. But if you haven't dealt with SQL before, it's going to be like, oh no, something else um, we're going to deal with. Um, 
and you create a new database, um, creating tables like a SAIS, and you create a table, right? And you specify the column, the data type, um, various features about the table. Um, and then you can look at the structure of the table, see what data is in it, add data. Um, and we do it, it also gives you the insert statement so you can, then if you're not used to doing SQL, you can generate the, the statement to look at what, what it does, copy it to your code. Um, you can also look, look at the information in the table. Now SQLite is slightly different in most databases in several ways. One is the data type of supports is very limited. Um, right? There's no integer, reals, text, and blobs. There's no date objects. Um, this is it. The other way SQLite differs from other databases is it uses dynamic typing. Um, and if you're a database person, this could probably this could be very scary. Um, you know, any column except a column this could integer primary key can hold any type of data. So literally, if you have a column declared to your type integer, you can store a string in that column. Mm. So what happens is, and normally when you declare a database, a table, and so I call them in a regular database, which is like from an integer or float, that means the database will only accept that data type in that column. Um, and SQLite just means, well, that's the data type we prefer to go in this column, and I'll take whatever you give me, and if you give me something that I can convert into that type without losing any data, I'll Let's go to do it, otherwise it'll store that information as is in that column. Um, so literally if you send a string to a column, it's supposed to be an integer, um, and that string is, doesn't represent an integer, um, it'll store the string. And the problem is when you then pull that data out, you'll be expecting a integer and you'll get a string. And this table is a preferred type and but again it's make it real. Um, so I created this you know I created a table um, of different types, right? There's a text, there's a numeric type, integer, real, and a blob. And I store different, I inserted different types into um, each one. Um, when I stored a string, of course, I got a text in the, in the text value, both the American integer columns, I got converted to integer, converted to real, and the blob column, it became a um, restorative text. When I, when I entered um, you know, 500 as an integer, um, you know, the text column converted to a text. Um, integer, integer, converted to real, 
and the block if it's real. Um, yeah, there's um, yeah, I'm not sure what happened here. You know, I sent it as binary, right? It's sort of blob and said null, I get null in every column. Just to show you that just as I put it well, try and convert values, um, and you may not always get um, what you expect, right? So when I sent it in as next number text start as a blob object. If you want to store Boolean values, um, you can do that, but it converts them to true zero and one. It's pretty standard for um, C based languages. Now, we can turn off this dynamic typing um, by using check typo um, and that will then give us the behavior we're used to in regular database where if we try and store a string into a column that's supposed to have an integer um, it will throw an error um, and so here i'm creating a column um, which have text and i'm doing a type check to make sure um, it has to be text. If it's not text, then throw an error. This is added after SQLite 3.3, and all versions of um, Android using older versions, so the very first Android API started with um, 3.4. So you can, you know, turn off dynamic typing in your database if you want. And if you want to know what version currently used, here's a command you can issue. Um, ADB is, comes with the emulator. Um, you know, a bunch of call, you know, common SQL statements, sucking from a table, reading from a table, sorting things into a table, updating tables, deleting data, creating and dropping tables, you know, adding columns to table. Um, Again, for most of you, is this, I'm hoping you're still awake. Um, you know, create a table, um, produce standard SQL statement. And I'll do point out the if not exists. Um, why? Well, because Another big difference between um, what you're used to in doing a database is you're used to having a central database. Um, and usually there's someone in charge of maintaining a database. In the Android setting, um, there is no central database. It's all on your user's phones. Um, so what happens when they install your application the first time, well, you have to create the database or you have to have it as part of your project as a resource. Um, but what happens when you've got version two or version three or version four of your application and the new features you added require you to modify your database? Um, how do you deal with that? Um, 
So you want to make sure that you don't recreate the database or recreate the table, um, but then you might lose data that's already there. So it's a good thing to keep in mind that um, the database that exists don't table exists don't don't write over it. Leaving all the data. Um, And right, I mean, so we talked about the um, we want all entries in the column to be unique. Um, check type of, and then of course, you know, primary key and using what the auto increment. So yeah, um, let's go right automatically. There's all incrementing on the primary key on the keys. Um, adding out increment basically tells it, look, if you've added 10 rows and deleted two, um, don't reuse those, like, those IDs for new data. Um, And there are various low level SQL commands you can put here to insert data and return um, row ID. And then here's this you know, snap one sort of statement where I'm ins inserting into a table. Um, you know, here's just to uh, recall columns I want to insert into and here's the data we want to insert into those columns. You know, select segment reading, again, reading all the columns, you know, find all the data in A equals um, down to news. Uh, I think all of you are young enough to hear about this. Um, it used to be a pretty standard interactive database with a command line tool. Um, and it was standard in the command line tools. You type in a spell statement, um, but the command line tool wanted to know when you were done. Um, because you may want, if the command got long enough, you'd want to span multiple lines. And so, a command line tool became common or required at a semicolon after you were done with the statement. So, the command line tool would know when you actually completed the command, so they send the database. Um, but that's no one does that anymore except old people like me. Um, and this is important. Um, like about this. This is not relevant to statements that create. Um, let me go back. Yeah, I assume everyone knows this. What's going wrong? Way, 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 way. If I were to read these values directly, say from a data from a web page, a field on a web page, um, if a user inserted, you know, some SQL statement as part of this input field on the web page, um, this um, statement then would more than likely execute that state that statement they entered on the database um, causing potential problems. Um, using variables um, we'll deal with that. Um, so 
So I created an insert statement like this, but instead of specifying the data directly, I specify the variables. Um, and then, um, and then when I execute the statement, I have to specify the actual data, and this will then um, not treat any text as a SQL statement in any of these variables. Um, update statements. Um, And then there's various, um, there's lots of SQL statements. You know, we've got a whole course on databases. Um, and some of the things are very complicated. Um, so some more examples. You know, here's creating a table. Um, with name. Um, I can create an index. Indexes are, are used to increase the form of the database. Um, so you can do a search on that column. Um, there's a B tree that you can use to find things much, much faster. So it does consume more space. Um, you know, adding more information into the table. Um, Now, creating a second table for office hours. Um, what do we do? Well, you know, for each office hour, there's a row, you know, start time, end time, day. And now, this factor ID, of course, is going to point down to this table, indicate which factor it is. Um, you know, so here we go, three, all right. Now here's a second table, question statement. Now a simple and service statement, of course, as we all know, the issue becomes we need to find well what that value is going to be is one. And so now we get some more complicated statements, right? You know, that I'm going to insert, but now I want to do it where the faculty ID is where the name is equal to the back. Um, so the where clause allows us to extract the faculty ID from one table to use in the other table. Our select statements become a bit more interesting too because now we have to worry about um, you know, sort of joining the tables together and we're specifying, okay, um, give me all give me all the names certain right from these two tables so I get you know, the combined result. And here is right a well for sex statements is pretty straightforward. What do we want? Um, from which tables, how they're connecting together, and then uh, the start time we do after nine, right? Before four thirty. Okay, so that's like a 30 minute version of a database course. Um, now we can talk about how we do this using the native interface in Android. 
Um, there are three different classes we have to worry about. Um, and we get to subclass, let's go like Popper. So helper has various methods. Um, now first is you know, we're done, we can close the database. Um, there are two ways we, we can get a database. One is um, get a readable database. Um, then we get a read, write database. Um, And there are several methods on what to do when the database is created for the first time. Um, and the database is opened. And here is an important method. Um, keep in mind this database is on people's phones. Um, so when your application evolves and you need to modify the database, um, there's methods that we're going to use to do that. The so documentation indicates a long running process to, to get a database. So we're going to do that in a background thread. Um, it also depends upon how big the database is. But we'll talk about that a little later. Um, we can, you know, all the classes in your application have access to the database. Um, there are ways in which your application can um, let other applications on the phone access the database. That's pretty rare. Um, and you can actually access that in various ADB commands you can use to actually poke at the database on your application um, on the phone directly. So to deal with the database, um, the SQLite helper subclass is one that'll say, here's your database you can, you can access. Um, there are various database methods we can use. Um, there's XQSQL, which we use to build tables. Um, we can also use it to add data. There's also special purpose methods um, for those of you who don't want to use full SQL, um, insert, update, and delete. And then um, there are a couple of query statements you can use to actually do select. Um, So these two statements basically execute SQL statements. Um, and these uh, are methods for the people who aren't familiar with SQL and trying to help you out. Um, and they will generate the proper SQL. Um, but again, what happens is you, you basically generate a small little language that you can use to generate SQL. Um, for those who don't know SQL. We do have transactions, so we can 
um, do multiple operations and then roll back the transaction if you want. Um, and so the syntax looks like this. Um, and you you have to um, I'll set transaction successfully, otherwise it's, it's rolled back for you. I wrote this, you can write, you know, writing, reading can be slow. Writing, so you may want to do it in the background. Um, So an example, um, to do this, um, how to create do inserts, updates, delete, and queries. Um, and so I have, again, two edit textures where I can, you know, display data, enter data, and then talk about, again, there's four operations, by the various buttons. And so the first thing you have to worry about is you have to create a subclass of database helper. Um, and we need a name for the database and we need a version. Um, You know, we have a constructor we have to call for the super. Um, the on create method of the database helper is called the first time we call any operation on the database. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm creating a table and inserting data. And we need to hide this. The upgrade method um, that's called again when you have version two or version three or version four of your application at some point you need to handle those in new additions to your application. You may need to modify the database sometime, and then you will modify your database helper to have. A different version than number one. Um, and when you call super, you have to test, you have to pass the database version, right? And when the version you pass to the super is different for the one that is stored for you, bought that tape a database, and that happens. Then, then the up, on upgrade function will be called and it'll be passed um, in the old version and the new version. And this method has to then deal with modifying the database to go from this current version to the new version. The fun part becomes, um, let's say on version or if your application, you modify the database from version one to version two, and then on version 10 of your application, you go from database version two to database version three. But there may be people who didn't upgrade for a long time, so they're still stuck on version one of your application, and then they immediately jump to version 10. So this on upgrade function has to deal with going from version one to version three. Make sense?
Um, and text about like this. Um, now, how do we actually use the database helper? How we do commands? Um, so here's my main class. Um, I want to make the my main activity right the on click listener for all my buttons. Um, so I created an array of the IDs for the buttons, um, and then I could cycle through them and just set the on click listener for each one to be the current um, activity. Um, and then I need access to my database helper. Um, and so in my onCreate, I instantiate my database helper. These two methods are designed to display the data from a database. Um, and this is convenient to have an integer version. All it does is call one with a string. Um, and I make sure that it's not null. Um, I then um, ask for a writable database from my names helper, which is my SQL helper. Um, and here's what I'm doing. I'm doing a raw query, which means I'm sending, right, a query. Um, there's a query. There's my query variable. And we use, we pass in an array, which is going to, the first element of the array is going to go to the first variable of my query. The second element of my array is going to my second variable. I only got one variable in this query, so my array contains just one element. Um, and then I need to need, read the results, and so how many rows did I get? Um, and I know I only got one, currently one row, so I'm going to move, I have to take that cursor and move it to the first location, um, first row, um, and then get get the value in the first location, get the value at an SID, and then the other one is a name. Um, and then I set the text um, from the results into my two fields. And I'll point out something slightly odd. Um, I'm not sure why, but my trials and tribulations in Android Studio, um, even though the database field and the name ID field in my interface are the exact same type, um, I could call set text on one directly, and the other one I had to convert it. In a, to cast to allow me to set text. I have no idea um, why. Um, just some um, functions to make it easy to get values out of those fields. Um, here is my on click method, which has been called. Um, 
And then remember now, I've got four buttons, right? And those four buttons are all calling the same on click method. So now I have to look, find out which button actually was initiated. And so I get its ID and if it's a read button, then I call my display database record. Um, and pass it in um, the ID to display. Um, again, from the other field, if it's a delete button, um, here I'm calling the delete method, um, which remember is not pure SQL. And so I get to do what table I want to deal with. Um, and then it's the select part of the SQL statement. Um, I want the ID to be in a variable. And yes, yes, we also have this underscore. Um, and the same thing is um, this delete statement could embed more than one variable. And so the last argument is the values that go into the variables, but there's only one. Um, There's insert. Um, again, uh, to show you how how the non direct SQL statements work. Um, yeah, I want to start in the names, but I need to know several things. I need to know which column it goes into and the value. Um, and so there is a special class we can use called content values. Um, and so I, it's basically a dictionary. I can put in my at key um, to get name is a name I'm getting from my user interface. Um, and now I can I pass that object in. So really, um, I'm not a fan of these methods because it's why not just use SQL. We don't have to worry about all this other stuff. Um, then my updates, um, it's the same thing. We, you know, I'm, I'm not using the raw SQL statement. So which table, um, what do we want to update? Um, then using content values. And then we need a select part to figure out which table which part we actually want to deal with um, and again a collection of values for the variables in our work files any question yes Rodney? yeah professor can you hear me yeah uh, so the textbook introduces the room API. Yeah. Do you see a reason to still use this API over room in certain situations? Um, no. If I'm if you're dealing with a new application, I would use room. Um, I cover this just because if you ever get involved in a legacy application, they may be using um, the database directly. I mean, break a plan talking about the room. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, it's always tricky. At what point you start talking about the old stuff and just talk about new stuff? Um, any other questions? Hmm. Um, yeah, again, that took some time. Um,
Yeah, we can um, use async task. Um, we can also use like Kotlin protein to um, grab things. But I don't point, as Ronnie pointed out, if you're starting something new, we actually want to use room and it makes things a lot easier for us in multiple ways. Um, so I'm not going to show you a detailed example on in async tasks or coroutines. And that should be um, yeah, you can um, there are several ways if you if you create a database in the emulator, um, Android Studio you can use a file explorer I showed you last time on how to get the database and look at it. Um, you can also use ADB um, to actually connect to your emulator and then um, and you start querying the database directly. But it's much easier to um, just use the Android Studio College score and look at the device that way. So now that, you know, we're going to go monitor, right? So we can actually look at it. Um, again, you have to go data, data, to see your application. Um, and then you will have a bunch of, right? Directory for databases and then you can. Look at them. You also pop them to your desktop and then open up in the desktop application to look at the contents. Yeah. Um, it's just easier to access it. Look at the database when you're developing on any later than, than on the actual device. Now normally I would have started talking about room, um, but I spent literally from about noon yesterday until nine o'clock dealing with Android Studio. Um, plus, Next week is spring break. Um, so there's no class uh, next week. Um, so we'll end here. Any questions, issues? Okay, no one seems to have any questions, issues, so we will... Uh, professor, I have a question. Okay. So, for example, like for other database like Oracle or SQL, we have so many tools available to basically, you know, uh, execute the query, manage the database. So, what about the SQLite uh, in the mobile, in Android? What tools do you have to manage it? Yeah, manage the database. Like, for example, if I don't want to create the database uh, using code, I have to create, I mean, I want to create the database using tool. So right. is there any tool available? Like, uh, for example, in Oracle, we have a Toad, or in S MS SQL, we have uh, uh, Microsoft SQL Server. Uh, some tool is there. So we can create from there. OK, that's a very good question. Um, but keep in mind that the way this works on a phone is people are going to install your application from the App Store, right? Um, and so the options we have are quite limited. Um, so there's Option number one is you create the database um, as part of your application. 
and you add it to your application as a resource. Um, now, the interesting part about that is that your resources are read only. So if your database on the user side is read only, that's fine there. If it's not read only, then what you have to do is um, when the application starts up, you have to check to see you have to then copy it from the resource to um, the place the files are, um, which means the very first time the application runs, you, you copy it. Um, it also means basically the only, there's no Android Studio doesn't or Android doesn't give you a way of being told this is the first time your application has been run on that device. So what you have to do is you have to look and see does it be, have I moved the database over to the right location? Yes or no. If it's not there, then I copy it from resources. All right. So you can create the database in advance, store it, add it to your project as a resource, and then you can copy it over um, to a, a writable location on, and then access it from there. Um, the other option is to, um, in your database helper, um, create the table or use room. So yeah, and that's like I started at the beginning of the lecture. You can um, there are some SQLite clients that you can use to generate that database, copy those data, and then add it to your um, Android project. Okay, uh, I got it. Uh, uh, if you can go back to the few back, I mean few slides back. So. I have a question there. Uh, one more. Uh, it is it is code actually. Yeah. Uh, okay. So uh, on the first line, on click right. So names helper dot get writable database. So it gives the database name where we can basically define the database name actually. Where is it like that? In the database? No, I mean uh, here the the second line, right? Uh, names helper dot get writable database. Right. This line gives the DB database uh, details, right? Database object. Right. But that configuration code where we can write I and mean, where it is that configuration code? What database username password? Those configuration. Um. So the question is, where are we specifying which database and the password? Yeah. Okay, first of all. SQLite does not have any passwords. Okay, oh, good to know. In part because, look, the database is on your individual phone, right? Um, the only thing that can access that database is your the application you wrote for that user, right? Yeah. Um, so, um, you know, basically the database merge your application. Um, and so your application acts as the password because there's no well, user can get to it. Um, now what if you want several different databases, right? Right. Um, that is um for each database you want on the device. Um you need a different database helper. Okay. Mm -hmm. Database helper is where you think about the database name. Yeah, I got it. Now, but keep in mind that, you know, a database can have multiple tables. Right. So yeah, you can, your a single application can have many Different databases as you, as you need, right? Creating, yeah. Yeah. Using, yes, using the database helper um, monitor database. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, thank you, Professor. Any other questions?
Professor, we, where we can find the recording of this, uh, all the videos? Um, great question. If you go to the Blackboard um, um, site for the course, and there's a video, lecture video uh, page. Mm -hmm. um, I have a table there, which has a link to, to each uh, these recording. Yeah, there we have until like you were using the previous uh, <coughs> uh, some tool, right? So we have until March 12. Now let me. So you should be seeing um, the course website, right? Blackboard. So, okay. Did I get it right? Make sure. You should be, you should be seeing, you know, here's the course Blackboard sites. Yeah. You like videos, um, and then here, here's all the um, links to the recording section. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I got it, Professor. Thank you so much. Any other question? Doesn't look like it. Um, again, next week is spring break. Um, So now classes. Hope everyone has a um, nice spring break. And given that there's a number of students from India, I hope your families back home are surviving their new 21 day lockdown. Um, at least here they allow us to go outside, whereas it, on my understanding is in India, they expect you to stay in your house for 21 days straight. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's hard to understand how it will work because you need to have enough food to support uh, I think they, they are open for essential stuff, like I mean, food and all you can go. But other than that, you cannot go. Right? Yeah, that is it. Yeah, what I read is like no even house whatsoever, and it's like couldn't say that's gonna work for that long. Okay, um, no questions. We'll adjourn. If you have again questions um, between now and. Next time we have class, um, post on the Blackboard, if they're personal in nature, you can send an email. Um, I'll be checking Blackboard periodically. Never have a good break. Thank you, Professor. Okay.